We're back with a special guest today on the Aiden's World Podcast. Here we have Dash King. He goes to my school. You know, we're not necessarily like friends. We don't know each other very well, but we're acquaintances. And he asked to, you know, come on, ask me some questions. Some people at school were wondering, you know, my stances on things. So we're going to have a little discussion here. Uh, so, yeah, it's episode 22. We're recording this actually on a different day. We're doing this on Thursday, uh, April 21st. So, uh, also, I got this Band-Aid on my face. It, I just cut myself, so that's for, that's why I have that on my face. It's a little weird, but anyways. So, yeah, Dash, so, you know, I guess uh, he, he some, some students at school, some of my classmates, and Dash wanted to ask me some questions where I stand on some things. Not necessarily the d- debate but more of a, a discussion episode. So anything you want to say here before we begin on, uh, you know, anything about you or? Uh, all right. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Dash. Uh, some people will be very excited to have me on the show. Um, here I have, like, a list of topics that um, kids at school would want to know your stance on because, um, like, uh, a lot of your episodes have to do with, like, um, abortion. They touch on religion and... Um, like privacy rights and stuff like that and we thought it would be nice to have your opinion on it and how you feel about those things instead of just getting like little tidbits in your episodes yeah. you know what i mean yeah that's all perfect right. all right so um what what's what's your first topic then we'll just get right into it all right well i have here the mo- the one i got the most actually texted me was about abortion where you stand on that um cuz I noticed after uh, people were learning about uh, Roe v. Wade the, uh, in school, um, they had stances on abortion. Uh, they like spoke about it more clearly. Yeah, but they they knew what was going on more about the um, issues of abortion and sh- should it be legal, should it not be legal, uh, like yeah. pro life and pro pro choice. Uh-huh. And um, uh, a lot of people had seen your uh, episode where you interviewed the pastor uh, who was pro life. And a lot of people just didn't know where you were at that. Yeah. And uh, your opinions on it. Well, I'm I'm 100% pro-life sin, and to me that's a sin. In fact, there's a lot of Russian people uh, protesting against this war. Um, because I noticed after uh, people were learning about uh, Roe v. Wade uh, in school, um, they had stances on abortion. Uh, they like spoke about it more clearly. Yeah. Uh, they they knew what was going on more about the um issues of abortion and sh- should it be legal should it not be legal uh like yeah. pro-life and pro- pro-choice uh-huh. and um uh a lot of people had seen your uh episode where you interviewed the pastor uh who was pro-life and a lot of people just didn't know where you were at that yeah and uh your opinions on it well i'm i'm 100 percent pro-life really no matter what unless you know i kind of i see it's okay if you got like uh, the mother's going to die during pregnancy. I, I'm okay with an abortion there, just because you know most of the times when your your mother would die or the, I guess the the breeder, the birth or the person giving birth dies, then I don't think the uh, child is going to live there anyway. So instead of you know two deaths, you know sadly it has to be this way, but sadly one would be better than two in this case. Um, but but really other than that, you know I know rape can get tough. Uh, it only makes up one percent of abortion cases, though, um, and I think incest is is like point zero three or something. So, you know, you still got to notice these very, 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 very small percentages, of course. But you know, there's bad things that happen in this world. This world is not perfect, and it is so bad that 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 people would go out there and and you know rape. And it's really, it's just, it's tough. It really is tough for for these women out there. Um, you know. It's sad that we live in a world where they have to be careful of everything. You know, it's it's terrible to say that, hey, you shouldn't, you know, you should maybe cover yourself up. I mean, that's just a terrible thing to say. And it's in this world, it's just sad. You know, I guess maybe, yeah, I guess get a gun for self-defense could, could possibly change some things up or something like that. But, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just terrible. But I still, I don't think that's very fair to the child. You know, I think instead of punishing the child, I think we should punish the uh, the the raper I think would be the better you know case get him get him yeah. instead of the and punishing the the innocent baby and of course the innocent woman don't punish them punish the yeah. actual uh, instigator yes okay um 
I had one. Uh, this is from me, actually. Um, how are your stances on capitalism and the free market? Do you think um, it's bad and the exploitation of the working class is bad? Or uh, do you think like communism is a better alternative? Well, I'm 100% capitalistic. You know, there's there's not much proof to me. I mean, you could look at all the countries that have tried communism. Excuse me. I mean, they never worked. You know, what about they, uh, Cuba? Well, Cuba, I mean, they got cars that are 100 years old, and that's like a nice car in Cuba right now. No one wants to trade with them. Nobody in the world's going to like you if you go to communism. And, and, you know, notice how a lot of these communist countries, who are their leaders? Well, there's dictators. You got Fidel Castro, for example, for Cuba. You got Italy's guy. Uh, what, what's his name? Italy's dictator back in like 1945. Mussolini. Mussolini. Yeah, Mussolini. That's his name. And uh, so you got all these countries that are just, they, they don't, there's no prospering. You know, it's everything shared. We don't like it when the government tells us what to do. For example, the government tells you to, uh, they want to take your guns or they want to tell you to get a ma wear a mask or you have to get vaccinated or else you're, you're causing the problem here. We, we don't like that. And that's what communism to me is. You know, it's kind of the higher ups or people as a whole telling you what to do. And, and just the fact that, you know, people kind of, you know, it's like, there's no really – you got classes more, I feel like, in communism and, and, and those types of uh, economies. I just don't like that. I think I like capitalism. Of course, you're going to have your poor people and you're going to have your really rich people. But that's every economy if you really think about it. People who want to work hard, not all the time, sadly, but most of the time are going to succeed in this – in this uh, in capitalism. Not, not saying they're all going to be millionaires by working hard. But you're probably not going to be homeless as long as you actually work and, and you want to succeed in a capitalistic society. So that's where I stand with that. All right. Um, and next year I have um, for marriage equality, like uh, same-sex marriage. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm LGB. Everything else I'm not – I don't uh, support. You know, if you want to marry same-sex – or you know, bisexual, whatever. That's fine with me. Who am I to tell you who you should be marrying and who you should be, you know, doing the deed with? I guess. Uh, but anyways, uh, but the the rest of it, I just don't support because because it causes problems. I'm not. I'm still sticking to my point. Like like, who am I to tell you? You know, to be a boy or to be a girl, transgender, all that. I'm not telling you. But but when it causes problems, like when we got boys playing in girls' sports, which is an obvious problem according to yeah. basic biology, that's going to cause problems. It's not going to get any better um, and, unless we stop this. And, you know, so I'm definitely against transgenderness or transgender yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that was my next topic was uh, how do you feel about um, transgenderism and, like, um, like crossing between, uh, like, bathrooms and sports and all that? How do you feel about that? Well, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that's – you know, you got basic biology that proves men are going to be uh, naturally more more stronger, most of the time more tall. You know, <clears throat> they just develop quicker than women. And it's just you see all these women, these high school athletes, girls that are our age, you know, a couple years older in college sports, that they hate this. They're complaining. You know, the media is not going to show you it a lot. But, you, you know, I watch Tucker Carlson occasionally. And it's like every day there's a new girl that's call, that's calling in complaining about Leah Thomas or that that boy who was in the women's uh, in the, in the women's track competition who took scholarships away from one of the greatest track racers in the world. Um, so it just it causes these problems, and the bathroom is just disturbing. I was at BJ's out BJ's brew house out in the at the strip. Uh, this was probably about two years ago, but I just see this I see this little girl walk into the girls' bathroom. And then I see this, obviously a guy, but, you know, wearing a dress, has a wig on and lipstick and all that stuff. And he walks in right behind her. And I, I mean, that's just so, I mean, that is like pedophilia to me. I mean, come on. That is just awful. And I don't think that should be allowed at all. You know, it's not that I don't like the person. I don't like the sin. And to me, that's a sin. And, and, and I just don't stand with that. Yeah. And, um, I get how you feel about, um, the transgender women going into women's sports. What about um, females who become uh, men and then compete in men's sports? Is that still wrong? Or well, it is wrong. It's not going to create a unfair competition per se. You know, I don't know really – I mean, that would just be an idiotic decision for a woman to do that. But, 
Uh, but it's still a problem because it's not right. We have boy sports and girl sports. I guess if you want to add a transgender uh, grouping to sports, I guess go ahead. You know, not many people are probably going to come and, and watch it. You know, there's probably not going to be enough people, enough uh, players in that category. But if you want to go do that, I guess be my guest. But boy, girl, it doesn't matter. if you're born, Whatever you're born with is the sport you stick in. That's how it should work. And and that's yeah. All right, and um, my next my next topic is about the Black Lives Matter movement, um, like uh the protests uh, against police brutality, like with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, uh, Elijah McClain, and like uh, a lot of the other victims. <clears throat> um, how do you feel about those protests? Well, <clears throat> I you know I I love everybody. I don't care about your race. I don't care about your religion. You know, you are a human being. We're all the human race. But when it comes to the organization and the, the riots, okay, not the protests, the riots, that it is a problem to me. I mean, and, and think about this. How many, how many of these Black Lives Matter riots have you heard of since Joe Biden went into office? Because personally, I've maybe heard of, of one or two in the past, now, you know, a year and a half now. So, is this really happening all the time, or does it only happen when the media wants to show it when Trump was in office? All of a sudden, it was like there was a new guy every week. Every, every week, there was a new guy. Is it just, you know, they want to show this for, uh, you know, the election year, because obviously that, that movement is completely anti-Trump. You know, like I said, I don't think Joe Biden has changed anything with, you know, if you want to say police brutality uh, or the Black Lives Matter riots. So why are we not seeing this now a year and a half later? I, I don't know. I think something is a little wrong now. I think it's more of a political agenda that this group is trying to push. I, they haven't done anything for black life. All their donations go to the Democratic Party. And, and they're, one of their founders, you probably heard this, just bought a $6 million mansion, I believe, in I think California, some pretty rich, wealthy state. And so, so what are they spending this money on? Are they spending it on actually helping the black community and, and the, the bad communities that some live in or the, you know, some homeless black people? Are they helping them? No, they're, they're not helping them. They're helping themselves, and they're helping a radical left agenda that they're trying to push for. That's what I see them as. If they were doing things for the black community, I'd be all for it. And if they weren't burning down buildings and black businesses, I'd also be all for it. But sadly, they do all of the above, all of the above, and I just can't support that. Oh, I understand. So uh, this brings me to our next topic. Um, this was a little while ago, but uh, we want to hear your thoughts about the Trump presidency and the controversy surrounding it. Well, he's a guy where you kind of got to be, you know, he's going to say a lot of not necessarily bad things, but he's a wild guy. I mean, even me, I love the guy. I really do. I really like him. I think he did a lot, you know, before COVID. Gas prices were half of what they are now. The stock market was doing great. Nothing about the economy was bad. The unemployment rate was about as low as it possibly can get. The black unemployment rate was lowest in, in, in like 40, 50 years, I believe. So for the economy, he was a great guy. Now, when it comes to some of the, the things he would say, I could see how you maybe get offended. But, you know, he, he, he did say things, um, you know, like he said how what was happening in the world. He said it like it, it is. And in today's world, it's not all rainbows. It's not all fun and rainbows. The world is not a great place. And and he illustrated that. Might have made people, some people cry along that, but but you just got to realize this world's not a great place. And, and he he knows that. He wants to make it better. But in order to make it better, you got to say the truth. Because sadly, just by saying everything's fun and everything's unicorns, rainbows, all this stuff, it's just not true. It's not going to help anything. Now, when it comes to you know the COVID crisis, well, once again, you know, I kind of have some theories behind that. I just, I don't really believe in coincidences, to be honest. Uh, you know, when all this stuff was happening in the year 2020, things we've never seen before. For a president, we've never seen hated as much as, as Trump was ever in history through our, you know, 260 years of, of being a country. He was the most hated president. It's not even close. And why, why did all these things just start happening in 2020? I mean, we have police brutality over the last, you know, for a while. I mean, we do. But like I said, 2020, it was like every week. And then we had some disease that we've never seen before that, you know, had a less than 1% uh, mortality rate. And, and we just we shut down the whole world. 
I mean, it's it's just really tough. And and honestly, I don't think. I mean, what else could he have done better? That's what I like to ask people. What what would you have done differently than him during that? I mean, he did everything the liberals wanted. He Masks were mandated pretty much throughout the whole country. We locked down for two weeks. Schools were closed down for months. What else do you want to do? He shut down the borders. They called him xenophobic. Joe Biden did it for the first couple of weeks of his presidency. Great human being. We love Joe Biden. So what else do you want him to do? I just don't understand when it comes to COVID. It's something we've never seen before. It's a terrible disease. It really is. Killed a lot of people. It's very sad. Very sad. And it's something to take seriously. But what could he have done differently? And that's what I ask people, and they don't know how to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, touching way back on the uh, free market and communism capitalist, uh, the uh, discussion we had earlier, um, a lot of arguments for communism is that um, in communism you can not more have a living wage. You can have a living, but in America um, – the like eight dollars an hour isn't gonna have you living. But how do you feel about their about the minimum wage being raised because of the people wanting to live um, a suitable life with just minimum wage? Well, think about California. I know there's a lot of people that live in California, but there's a lot of homeless people that live there too, and think they have the highest minimum wage in the country. So that's not a good sign to me, at least. Um, when you raise the minimum wage, think about this. Okay, say McDonald's, their daily budget, I mean, this is obviously not tr not true at all, but say they spend you know, $100 a day on, you know, some on employees, some on food. So say they spend $50 of it on employees, $50 on it of food to, to cook for people, obviously. So say we raise the minimum wage, so now they're spending $70 on their employees, and they only got $30 to spend on their food. What are they going to have to do? They're going to have to raise the budget, which is then going to raise the price of food or they're just going to run out of food and you know at the snap of the fingers so that's the problem with minimum wage it sounds like a great idea it really does when you look into what happens in these businesses second thing is they don't they can't they don't have enough money to hire people small businesses hate when minimum wage rises because they don't have enough money to hire more people so that's also why you go to a restaurant there's you know a couple waitresses and a couple cooks in the back it takes, you know, a long time just to get your drinks, I feel like, at these restaurants because they don't have enough people to work. When we want to raise minimum wage, you know, we see inflation's through the roof right now. That's a cause of raising minimum wage. Uh, you know, money doesn't just fall from the clouds. You know, you think McDonald's has all this money to spend. Well, they don't. I mean, they don't. It's, it's, just, it's just how um, the economy works. You know, I wish we could be giving people $15 an hour, but in reality, it, it's impossible. All right. Um, next year, I have um, uh, marijuana legalization uh, in America. Do you think it's a problem for um, Americans to just be able to just go purchase marijuana and well, smoke it recreationally? Well, medically, I'm fine with it. You know, I, and and honestly, I got to do more research on medical on on marijuana uh, recreational. I I am fine with it unless. It, it is proven to be a gateway drug because that's when people cause, you know, so you take this and then you start taking higher up drugs, you know, like opioids or heroin or something that could actually get you. And then you go kill someone because you're, you know, you're so high, you go kill someone or you're getting an accident. So that's when it causes problems. But really recreational marijuana, like I said, as long as it's not like proven to be a gateway drug most of the time, I really, I don't have a problem. You know, I'm a kind of a live and let die in that case. So, you know, I personally will never do that, but. You know, uh, live and let die, I guess. Yeah. All right. So last year, I have cancel culture. What are your feelings on cancel culture and witch hunting in the media? Well, you know, that's it's got to stop. It really does. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like it's just something you don't like. And you just get rid of it. I mean, that's not how it works. You got to boycotting is one thing. Just canceling because you don't like something is another thing. I mean, canceling Gina Carano was ridiculous first off and you know the funny thing is because you know she was comparing things to uh, you know 1940s Germany the Nazis to today's American society well you know in school right now we just got a paper two weeks back comparing that you know the Nazis and the encampments Auschwitz all that stuff comparing that to Jim Crow laws and and, uh, and comparing it to America so how are we allowed to teach that in school but when Gina Carano does it she gets canceled. So is it really just a political agenda that they're trying to push for? Are we actually canceling 
bad things. For example, the Indians. I just went to an Indians game yesterday. Why are we canceling that? The reason they are named the Indians is not because of necessarily a, just a group of Indians that they wanted to call it after. One of their first ever players back, you know, oh my goodness, this is probably 200 years ago almost, was an Indian. That's why they named him, named the team the Indians, because of him, the player. So why don't we actually go back and do our research and realize that we're not calling them the Indians because we want to be racist just after a random tribe of Indians, we're just going to call them that. Um, and, and so we need to do research. If we're really going to boycott things, that's that's one thing. You know, boycotting straight, I mean, that is your First Amendment right. But to cancel things, especially when you have zero research into that topic, is just silly and ridiculous. Yeah, it, it is. I have just literally gotten a text. Um, they wanted to, I know I said that last one was my last one, but I just got a text. Uh, this person wants to know your feelings on the uh, Ukraine-Russia um like uh, the conflict going on there. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's sad, and I, I I'm I'm obviously for Ukraine, you know, democracy. But both sides do have some guilty parts. I mean, Russia's more, way more. But Ukraine has definitely done some things, like for example, creating the ghost of Kiev. That was all made up. He was never real. They've created some people. Have we got some reports on explosions that they said that never happened? You know, so. I know that's a war tactic, which is fine, but it's I don't I don't really like that. I think you, you know you go out and fight in the war. Stop using the media to benefit you, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a little wrong, and and we also got to care. I know we everyone's like we hate Russia, we hate all of Russia. We got to think about the Russian people too. Not all the Russian people want this war to happen. In fact, there's a lot of Russian people uh, protesting against this war and against Putin. You got to remember, Putin's. Nobody likes him. Even the Russian people don't like him. They're just not allowed to say it, so you don't hear about it. Because if you say it, you know he's gonna give you a, a shot in the head or something. You know what I mean? But um, so, but nobody really likes Putin. And so we gotta we gotta remember not just the Ukrainian people, but the Russian people as well. But what Putin's doing and trying to take back is it, just it's terrible, and it's it's just awful on so many levels. It is. I had okay. I I know. I literally said that was the last one. Oh, we got but time. I skipped over one um, about uh, white supremacy and the fact that there are neo-Nazi groups uh, being promoted and rising in Ukraine right now, and uh, how that's influencing neo-Nazi groups in America as well. Well, I mean, there's going to be bad people in the world all the time. I mean, it's terrible. Once again, like I said, this world's not a good place. There's going to be bad groups of people. There's going to be good groups of people. So those are people that, you know, Pre Trump came out a few years ago and he said, this, you know, get rid of these white supremacist groups. He said it in, I believe, a rally in North Carolina. Um, so that's what we just got to do. Just kick them out of society. Just, I guess, you know, get rid of them in some form, some way, not necessarily kill them because that's not right, but get rid of them. We, we got to get them out of our society, clean up society by taking out these groups and, you know, there's bad people on both sides. You know, we got these anarchist uh, rioters back in 2020 that were burning down cities. That's bad. Of course, white supremacy is very bad as well. Um, and, you know, and I think it's kind of fading away. But, you know, there is still going to be people. That, I mean, the, key, the KKK still exists in today's world, sadly. But, you know, just, just get it out of our society. Clean it up. We got to find ways to fix this problem. And like I said, it is dying. Statistically, it is dying. It'll probably be gone soon. But on both sides, it's a problem, and we need to get rid of it on both sides with anarchists and white supremacists, KKK, all that stuff. Just get rid of it. All right. That is, that's all I have for you uh, today. Uh, thank you so much for having me on the show. I look forward to working with you in the future, possibly. Yeah, perfect. Um, I know the people Good are time. definitely looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you so much for having me here, and you have a great Appreciate day. Appreciate coming on. You too. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. That was a fun interview. Like I said, anyone that wants to be on, I am always available uh, to record with anyone. You know, we just did that for free through uh, Google Meet. So, I mean, that was good, fun time. You know, I like it.